Hello, welcome to Quarantine Cuisine. Uh, today, really, really tasty stew casserole. It's going to be my take on beef bourguignon. Three ingredients in this, super simple. We've got onions, we've got beef, and we've got red wine, plus a little bit of salt and pepper, a bit of flour to just to thicken the sauce. So, we've got a lot of onions, and we're going to just chop these into slices. Like so. So there's probably about seven or eight large onions here. I've got a mixture of uh, white onions and red onions for no particular reason other than that's what I had in the fridge to use up. So all of those get chopped up. So that's an enormous amount of onions there. And then over here, I've got some beef browning up. Uh, I've got flank steak here, and then this is braising steak, which I'm just browning off. Now, the reason you brown it off is to add flavor to the meat. Okay, so it adds flavor to the, the beef, adds a richness to the color. So I'm browning this off, and then I'm gonna chop it up into chunks. And again, I'm doing a massive batch cook of uh, food because then I've got to cook once and then I can freeze the remainder and I've got probably four or five days worth of food cooked in one simple thing. Batch cooking is absolutely your secret here, okay? Batch cooking is the way forward. There we go. Um, come back in a bit and I'll show you how we then put the rest of it together. We've got all the meat browned off. I've kept it in whole slabs for the time being. Here's the last of it in here. And you can see, uh, I love this little weight press thing by the way, really useful. You can see it's beautifully caramelized. So it's taken on loads and loads of color and that's gonna help color the sauce, but also give it that deep, rich beef flavor. Speaking of which, Next stage, this is beef fat, okay, or beef tallow or dripping. Uh, I really like to cook with it. Um, it's got a really high smoke point, so it doesn't get broken down on high temperatures, and it makes it taste of beef, which is what we're cooking. So, in that goes. And now we put all of the onions. And you'll see how many there are. And it goes into there. Now we're gonna cook these down for a very, very, very long time. Probably about 40 minutes. Um, I'm gonna have it on a lowish heat, high to begin with, just to sort of help break them down. And I'm going to, every five minutes, give it a stir. At this point, I'm adding no salt to the onions. I will, but not to start with. If you add the salt right now, when the onions are still raw, the salt pulls a lot of water out of the onions. So rather than frying, they just end up steaming or boiling in their own juices. And I want that fried caramelized taste. We've caramelized the beef, I want to caramelize the onions now. Get the sugars out, start to burn the sugars, which is what caramel is, it's burnt sugar. Um, and that adds the depth of the flavor. So remember, this is gonna have three ingredients. Also, you can start to see on the onions, there's a bit of color coming on them already. That's the color from the beef. This is the same pan that the beef is cooked in, and the same juices. So it's gonna take up all that flavor. Three ingredients, beef, onions, red wine. This is high quality, very expensive red wine. It even says here, red blend. Basically, this is as cheap a red wine as you can get before it comes vinegar. Now, a traditional beef bourguignon um, uses a burgundy, because that's the region of France it's from. Eh, I'm not gonna spend 10 quid on uh, a bottle of wine to then throw it into my stew to feed my horrible children. Um, so instead they just get the cheap rubbish. Now, do not worry if you have children, you are not giving them alcohol because we cook all the alcohol off. Alcohol's got a slightly lower boiling temperature to water. So as this starts to bloop, 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 all the alcohol is cooked off and you just end up with the fantastic grape juicy flavors. Come back later, thank you very much. Welcome back, come a little closer. Remember that massive pile of onions? 
These have been cooking down for 30, 40 minutes now. And you can see they're absolutely caramelized, sticky, reduced down, heavily browned onions. This beef bourguignon recipe gets a depth of flavor from a couple of things. The browned beef, you've got to brown it first. You need it heavily caramelized. The heavily browned onions get caramelized. The reduced red wine, and we've got some stock as well. This happens to be chicken stock. Um, we had some chickens earlier on in the week that I cooked and then used the bones to make a bone broth. See the link to the recipe down below. All I'm gonna do now is I have to compile all this stuff together and then let it slowly hobble away. So, thickening agent is some flour. Plain flour is best. You can't get it for love and money at the moment. All self-raising flour is, is normal flour with a few raising agents in it. That matter if you're baking, doesn't matter if you're using it in a sauce. It's not making any difference not to the Not going up with surprise scones. We might end up with <laughs> beef souffle, um, but no, it won't. Okay, so it's raging agents have no effect on anything. So this is a lot of liquid. So I'm probably putting about a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of flour in there. Okay, I've got this heat all the way down. I'm gonna stir the onions through that. As the sauce reduces, the flour and the fat and the liquid will all combine and make a beautiful, rich it sauce. It smells amazing already, just fried onions. Just fried onions. To that, we're gonna add the beef. Now this is, oh my God, like this is days and days and days worth of food. Excuse my so mobile phone ringing in the background. <laughs> okay, so we've got the beef. This is the chicken stock, okay? Now you can see, because we cook for a long time, we use the roast chicken bones. It's got a lovely dark brown, yellowy color. I don't know, brown, yellow, yellow, brown. That goes in. And then I'm gonna put in one bottle of red wine. Now, if you're using a normal amount of food for a normal family, then a glass of wine would be absolutely fine. You don't have to worry about the alcohol from this. It all gets cooked off in the cooking process. I've also got actually, in this frying pan, I fried off some of the onions and beef as well. And so this is just some of the jus from that. So all that goes in. So we've got the beef, we've got a bottle of red wine, we've got the stock, and you can see it's a very, at the moment, wet and runny sauce. The flour is going to thicken up as it heats and then the uh, sauce itself is going to reduce. I'm going to have this in a low heat three or four hours, maybe even more. Um, I'm going to add some salt and pepper to it now, but not much. And as it reduces, I'm going to taste it regularly and adjust the seasoning. Okay. Bon appetit, come back later. To accompany our gorgeous beef bourguignon, traditional French cuisine, we are going completely left field. We're gonna do succotash, okay? So succotash is uh, a Native American Indian um, name for smashed corn kernels, okay? And this has got potatoes, corn, peppers, um, traditionally tomatoes, so I've not put tomatoes in this, and it's kind of all just mixed together and cooked. Sometimes as a sort of stew, sometimes fried like I'm doing, okay? And it is, if you think about it, the sweet corn, the tomatoes, the peppers, and the potatoes, all of those things come from America. So this is a traditional, almost American food, and not American like, burgers and pizza, which comes from Germany and Italy, this actually comes from America. It's all food that existed in the New World, as it was called then, and didn't exist in Europe until it was brought over uh, by the piratical barbarians that murdered everybody over there. Um, okay, so in here we have got onions, because they're amazing, and we've got the sweet corn, uh, which I took straight off the husk. 
and we've got peppers, red and yellow ones, and we've got bacon because, well, bacon's amazing, and it's a nice little seasoning thing. And all that's in there, just cooked off nice and slow. And then here we have some gorgeous new potatoes. Again, traditional American food, this. Well, technically, I think it was South American, but nevertheless. And they're, they've been cooked. We're going to throw all that into there. And just stir it through. Now, this beef bourguignon I made two days ago and it's just been sitting in the fridge for two days on purpose not just through sheer bloody laziness but I, I wanted that two days of the cooking to just to sort of marry all the flavours together. Now no French Frenchman in the world is ever going to put this beautiful burgundy stew with American succotash um, say succotash Joss. Succotash. It's a stupid word. <laughs> but it is as fantastically quintessentially American Indian as you can get with a French beef stew. For no reason at all. No reason at all. So I give to you beef bourguignon and succotash. Yeah. Say succotash. Succotash. Stupid name. Thank you very much. <laughs>